osmosis. We are here today, I'm going to talk about osmosis. And I have to say, I wasn't really going to make this clip, but I, I actually, uh, you know, I asked students at the beginning of each semester to tell me why they're taking a course online. And one of my students, um, whom I already like this semester, just emailed me and said the reason they're taking this course online is so that they don't have to listen to another uh, biology professor talk about osmosis on and on and on. So, you know, I thought I would make this video clip especially for that student so they could just watch this over and over and over again in their spare time to remember how much they like osmosis. So, uh, here we go. Osmosis is the diffusion of water across a membrane. All right, now that's not too difficult, but I think it's important to think that it starts with the diffusion concept. So let's go back to diffusion. And diffusion is, gosh, let's see, that's two Fs, right? Diffusion. And diffusion is the movement of molecules from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. And this is a pretty straightforward concept. Um, it's one you're all accustomed to. If somebody in the back of the room squirts out their... Uh, their perfume that will sort of diffuse across the room and eventually you'll smell it on this side of the room. And diffusion is a, is a really important force because it drives a huge number of the of the, the movements of molecules in your body. Uh, an example is every time you inhale, oxygen diffuses across the membrane of your lungs into your bloodstream. And it isn't moved there by some muscle or some enzyme or something, it actually diffuses there. So the force itself of diffusion is a weak force, it's not considered a strong one, but it is taken as a whole extremely important in moving molecules around in your body. So um, from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. Now when we make this osmosis we're talking about diffusion of water. So I'm going to write diffusion of water across a membrane. Okay, the diffusion of water across a membrane. So it is, uh, well, let's take a look. Well, let's make this our membrane. And they always use what they call a semi-permeable membrane, which means that water can get across it, but other things cannot. And it's kind of hard to imagine what that looks like, but water is relatively small out there in uh, nature. Uh, you could draw water like this, little tiny polar bears down here as molecules. And then the other molecules that are out there would be relatively large. Like say we're looking at a sodium ion, which would be Na+. It's going to be big in comparison. So if you want to just imagine that there are some small holes in this membrane here that the water molecules can squeeze through, but the other molecules cannot. Now, I like to represent this just by these big circles, for example. And let's close the system, so let's make this two, I'll make this a square. Can you see all that? All right, so I'll adjust myself a bit here. The, uh, in this case, if we have a lot of molecules on this side, say we dissolve a bunch of salt over here, and there are a bunch of sodium ions, all right? And then we don't have any on this side. Let's just put one over there for fun. Well, we know, let's take diffusion. The first thing you're going to think about is, well, these things would diffuse so they would be equal in numbers, right? So the sodiums would diffuse across this membrane to be equally abundant in all areas if they could, but they can't because this is a semi-permeable membrane that does not allow the large sodium ions to get across it. Water, however, can cross this membrane. And this is kind of a cool thing about what's actually happening here. Like, why does water do this? What water's going to do is it's going to move from over here where there's lots of water molecules, okay? It, and it's going to move to equalize the concentration of the solutes, which are these things, okay? So the solutes here, so it's going to try to equalize the concentration of the sodium. So if sodium is really a lot of them over here, it's going to try to dilute them and move across this membrane 
to dilute this concentration of sodium until it's the same as this one. Now in my drawing, that's going to be a whole lot of water is going to move over here. And this thing is going to sort of expand. And it might even explode if, if it doesn't have a strong membrane around the outside, right? So water is going to just go zipping across here. Now, part of the reason, I, I have to have an explanation for everything. And there's a lot of things that we don't understand about about uh, osmosis. And I say we, I mean scientists in general. Um, not being a chemist, I probably don't know as much as many. However, the, uh, I still you can read some of the theory about how this works. And generally what, what people are thinking is that, remember those polar bears get attracted to these things because they're, they are slightly charged, remember? So all the water that's over here, actually what it does is it gloms on to these ions that are on this side. And when it gloms on, it packs together and it leaves a bunch of open space for more water molecules to come over. And I find that amazing. So what ends up happening is the water molecules rush into the empty space, left behind, while their brethren over here have glommed on to these, these other molecules. Right? So that may be the cause of osmosis, but what practically is happening is they're going from uh, water is moving to equalize the concentration of solutes. Well, what does that mean? Um, I guess that means, let's take an example of why it's important in cells. So I'm going to erase this model and look at another one. Let's draw our friend the cell here. Now, that's a, if that's a cell, and I'm going to use uh, Let's say there's a bunch of solutes inside your cell, like these things. Now assume there's water everywhere out here, okay? And let's make just a few on the outside of these solutes. It could be salts, like sodium, all right? But what's going to happen for this cell now, it has a high concentration of these, uh, these uh, solutes, or these sodium ions inside here. Right? And in a low concentration outside. So which way will water tend to go if it can? Let's say it's going to go from the highest concentration. It's going to try to equalize the concentrations. So in fact, it's going to have to make this concentration the same as that. And since we can't move the sodium ions, we're going to have to just water them down. So water, if it can, will come in from the outside through the cell wall and go in. Okay? And that is an important part of osmosis because it's going to cause the cell to get bigger. Bigger and bigger and bigger because it's going to fill up with water until there's about the same concentration of these guys in here. Okay? Now in this particular case, we call this uh, the solution uh, is going to be hypotonic to the cell. To the cell. Hypotonic to the cell. Hypotonic to the cell. We could have a different type of solution that is the easy one to remember, which is hypertonic to the cell. So this refers to the solution that your cell is sitting in, right? So I, the one I remember most easily is hypertonic, because hyper means, I think about hyperactive being lots of energy. Hyper means lots of these guys on the outside. Hypo means very few. So in this case, we had fewer on the outside than on the inside. And what happened is water rushed into the inside. And sometimes this can cause a cell to explode. Okay, let's redraw this and do a hypertonic to the cell condition. There's my cell. And in this case, I've got a couple in here, but I've got a whole bunch outside. All right, now what's going to happen to the water? It's going to try to equalize the concentrations. So water is going to flow out of this cell if it can. And it can, by the way, for cells because there are these little pores in cells that allow water to move in and out. It's pretty important for cells. So as the water moves out of the cell to equalize the concentration, uh, then this cell tends to shrink. 
and it gets smaller and smaller ah, until it's nice and tiny and the concentration of these ions is the same inside as it is outside. Wow, that's pretty cool. Now the third class is of course going to be called isotonic. When you're isotonic to the cell, it means you're exactly the same. So as you might imagine, in an isotonic scenario, where the solution is isotonic to the cell, you're going to have exactly the same number of these concentration, at least, of ions on the inside as on the outside. Ah, now the water will not really go in or out in any predominant direction. It can move in and out, but it doesn't change the concentration. So the cell neither shrinks nor expands. Now this is really important. Some of you are going to be nursing majors. You might want to. You might wonder why we put when somebody gets to an, an IV solution at the hospital. You wonder what kind of solution. What's, what's so important about an IV solution? One simple question is why don't we just put distilled water into the blood when you want to hydrate somebody? Why do you put salty water in the blood? And, and I think you know the answer to that question, you should, is that if you put distilled water in there, well, let's take a look at your cells. Distilled water, squirt it in there, and this is the example of a blood cell. This is a blood cell, it actually has a bunch of things inside of it, some solutes. You put that in distilled water, the water's going to try to equalize the concentration. So water is going to come rushing in to those cells. And what it causes is it causes cells to explode. So if you were out there trying to help somebody and you gave them an IV with distilled water, it would kill them. Or at least it would destroy all their blood cells. So depending on how much, it would be bad. So obviously if you give too much salt, salt too salty of water, the cells crenate or they shrink. And we use the same process. We look at what happens when you, I think in my lecture I talk about putting salt to melt the ice on your sidewalks. It works great to melt some ice there. And then in the springtime you have a bunch of dead grass. Why is that? Okay. That's osmosis for you. It is a fantastically important process. We're going to talk about it again when we talk about cholera. Thanks.